I'm talking today to UK Councillor Joy Archer. Hi, Joy, how are you? Hello, Joanne, I'm fine, thank you. Very good, thank you. Joy, today we're talking about self-esteem. What is self-esteem and how is it different from confidence? Confidence, I think, is is how you actually demonstrate the self-esteem. Confidence, I think, is what comes over to other people. Self-esteem is what you feel inside, and that means you may very well come across as a supremely confident person, while having very low self-esteem that other people are, aware, are unaware of. That's what I think the crucial difference is. And what would be some signs of low self-esteem? Uh, low self-esteem, the very obvious sign of that is people-pleasing, I think. It's, 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 down to, it's down to your conditions of worth, it's, it's down to how you perceive you are acceptable to other people. And if you base your acceptability to yourself on that, that results in that results in low self-esteem, and it's sometimes it's something you may not even realise until you've been living for years that you ha that that this is where your low self-esteem is centred. What causes low self-esteem, and is it possible that people could be born with low self-esteem? You're not born with low self-esteem, no. Um, you're born with no conditions of worth at all. This is the basis of person-centred counselling. That a baby has no expectations of anyone else and everyone else simply attends to those, that baby's primary needs. So, the baby will cry when it is hungry, wet, tired, separated from its mother and whatever. And those needs will be attended to. As you grow and develop, you become aware that people expect things of you. And that can begin, that can begin in childhood, um, from the sort of like, big boys don't cry, or, or, or don't interrupt while the grown-ups are talking, or don't eat the last biscuit on the plate, or say please and thank you. And then it goes, and then that low self-esteem can develop through the framework of, of wanting to please one's parents, one's teachers, and, and therefore putting a lot of, a lot of strain on, on yourself and your expectations of yourself. And, uh, and if you think about it, as people grow up, quite often, the most overtly confident people, when it comes to it, often have trouble saying no. The old saying no is a sentence. What are some of the practical tips that you can share to help someone who's suffering from low self-esteem? I think some useful some useful day-to-day -day tips, because that is what I think you're looking for, yes? I think I would say, first of all, remember it's not, everything is not about you. First of all, if people don't like you, that is, that is, that is their problem, not yours. Not everyone can like you. You can't please everybody. Also, also I think, it's worth remembering the very old saying of uh, Eleanor Roosevelt that people cannot make you feel inferior without your consent. You, it's all too easy to say so and so made me feel this, so and so made me feel that. It is a very big, it is a very big and very useful thing to stop and ask yourself, why did I feel that? Do I have to choose to feel that? On a, on a more basic level, I would say, look after yourself. Value yourself, because you will then be of most value to others anyway. And 
I would also say accept compliments. Don't don't do yourself down. Um, and if you are feeling that you are being forced into pleasing somebody else's needs, don't apologise and don't explain. No, that's not possible. No, that doesn't work for me. Rather than, I can't because X, Y, Z. Keep, keep yourself, keep yourself empowered. What role do you think positive thinking and gratitude play in helping people to build self-esteem? I'm not sure about the gratitude part, but um, but the positive thinking, the positive thinking really has an absolutely central role because positive thinking results in you valuing you. When you begin to value you and you begin to think of all the things, all the things that you you are valuable for, that you do for yourself and for other people, that is when you begin to develop self-esteem. And when you stop when you stop when you stop being hell bent on pleasing other people and worrying what other people think of you, that is that is where your self-esteem begins to grow. Thank you, Joy. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you, John.